Hi guys, so today I want to try out the Anna Griffin um, envelope dies that I picked up. I picked up the slimline and the square. Um, I'll have links in the description box. Those would be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you purchase items through those links. Having said that, for these items, they are still sold out, I believe, um, on HSN. Now, if Anna has them on her site, I don't know. I haven't checked, but um, maybe they'll restock them. I didn't get the 5x7, and now I regret it, of course, because why not? <laughs> I like to have them all, but... Um, you know, it's so funny. I was kind of picking up after doing a diamond press video and I pulled out this acetate, um, acetate, um, vellum. And you know what? I think I'm going to make a vellum envelope and it might be the worst idea I've ever had. Well, who knows? We're going to try it. So I am going to need a whole sheet of this. This is a pack I picked up from HSN. I'll try to link it there if it's available. Uh, vellum every day. And I think they had it in two different colorways. I'm not sure exactly. I guess this is everyday colors. Um, I even kept that little scrap that I cut away because that's how I am. Um, so, oh, I hate to do this because if it doesn't come out nicely, you know, this is oh, some beautiful stuff. But I'll use this color since this is probably not a color I would use more often. I love that pink. I, was, I gravitate towards the pink, but let's use this one in case I mess it up. <laughs> and I think I'm going to do the slim line. So this is the square envelope and I've already kind of... I mean, if you guys want an individual video on this, or maybe we'll just cut it out in this video with regular paper just to have an envelope. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Ah. Okay, because this one's very basic. I mean, they're both basically the same construction, but um, this one here, um, I can just use regular paper. And you know what? Let's maybe... We'll do this one first, and that way we'll get some have some idea of how this works and then we'll do the vellum so I am gonna get out my enlarged plates um, cutting plates which I've already talked to you guys about long you know every time we and I used to do this all the time anyway just because I like to use my smaller plates they are less expensive and they're already like this my newer plate my longer plates are used way less and they are very nice looking I am gonna have to turn on the impress um, does this go through the Gemini Jr. I think it might be a little bit too wide, guys. I'm just spitballing here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so after you've tweaked your ugh, die, um, oh, you guys, it's just, I mean, I can get it in there, like this part, and then right here it gets really like stuck to side to side, which means it wouldn't cut on the plates, you know, for the Gemini Junior. Um, in another larger machine or your Gemini, yeah, sure, but not the Junior. It, it, I mean, I can scrape the <laughs> sides. That's not good. That's this one. The slim line, yes, you can still do the same trick. So what I talked about, whenever you guys only have, like, let's say the basic standard size, just max it out as much as you can. Put your paper, your sandwich, you know, your whatever plate as far in as you can. Let it go through. And when it comes out, remove that carefully and then place it where it didn't cut and then run that through. You can run it through this other way or however. Um, and it'll cut both parts for you. It's just going to be take two transactions instead of just one go through. The reason I'm going to do it with the larger plates is because I am going to use the embossing and I honestly don't want to fiddle with it but if this is all you have obviously you can still get it done and then after when you go do the embossing actually it's not even that much of a problem because you would just have your paper and your die just like if it was regular you know if you were to cut it regularly um, and then run it through because this is the only part you're going to emboss anyway. So I think that's actually not a big deal. Um, okay. So let me grab some paper because I didn't even think about using this one at all. I was just going to go straight to the slim line. So again, you're just going to need the envelope base, one of them. If you want to emboss it or not emboss it, that's up to you. Um, you need two side panels and then we're just going to put it together. So, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I like how she shows this one here. This actually comes from a different set, but you know, however you want to put on the front of your card. It doesn't come with this set. This one has like closures, I guess. Uh, let me pick a piece of paper. And it looks like, and I think Anna mentioned it herself, that you're going to need two, like, 12-inch pieces of paper. Um, we'll see. Yeah, because these are pretty wide. Like, I don't think you can get it from just one piece of paper. Even just laying them out like this, let's see what it looks like. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Maybe she was talking about the slimline one. I can't remember what she was presenting, but I remember her mentioning that. And then this is how long? Yeah, hold on. <laughs> this die is bigger than... Oh, that's why. That's why you need two 12 pieces of paper. 12 inch. 
you're gonna have to put it at an angle like this. If you do it this way, it's like almost 13 inches. It's actually over 13 inches in the length. So I think you're gonna have to cut it like this. Does that make sense? I'll be right back. Okay guys, so let's talk about this. 12 inch piece of paper. Oh man, does that mean the vellum? Hopefully, mm. I wanna make the other envelope out, of, envelope out of vellum, but what if it's a disaster and then I just wasted all that vellum, but oh well. Um, yeah, so as you can see, 12 inch, well maybe you can't see. Ugh, I can't back up anymore with this. There. <laughs> It's, you know, it's not going to work. And even on an 8.5 by 11, I don't think it would work. I should have pulled one out of here, but I don't, I didn't. Okay, so I'm going to put this, like, let's say up to the corner, right? Let's just say. But it looks like you can still get these other pieces cut from the excess. Especially if you move this, like, manipulate it just right. Like, let's say that one's there. This piece is here. And this piece cuts from over here. Yeah, okay, so one piece on this guy. You do have to kind of be judicious with how you do this part. Um, I am going to stick this down. I reused that little piece there. I took some other pieces off because I was getting a bunch on my surface here. You want this to stick down really well anyway because when you go to emboss this, you don't want to lose your paper. But, of course, this is the part that's going to stay, so I... I'm going to be a little more strategic with how I place my tape. Like right here, I'll put some inside and some outside. And then I'm going to trim this away as close as I can so I can still use the extra pieces. So I'm going to cut from like super close, right? And right here, I can just kind of jut out. And again, pretty close here. Hopefully I didn't mess that up. <laughs> okay. And these can run through in the regular size. Whenever I can use the regular size or my marquee or something like that, I'd rather do that than wear out my more expensive bigger plates. But, okay. So we're going to do this. So then we'll trim that out, too. And this one. Again, I'm going to put one more piece of tape. Maybe here. Just a little bit, so it's touching that paper just a little bit. I don't want too much. And I'm going to use my large plate. So these are the large plates, and you can see I hardly use them. Um, I don't cut into my magnetic mats, and people always leave me comments about that. This is how I do it. Anna does it differently. She has unlimited mats, I'm sure. Um, I like to cut into the plastic plate because I don't really care about the magnetic mat thing. But that's up to you. I feel like it destroys the mat, and other people say they don't want to destroy this, so like, cut wherever you like, okay? <laughs> I do what I like, you do what you like. It's fine. And then uh, some people want to, you know, have explained to me that she does it. Oh, it looks like somebody stepped on this. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shoe print. Um, about why she does it. No, I understand why she does it. I just don't do it that way. Um, and then when you buy her machine, it doesn't tell you to cut into the magnetic mag. That's something that she started doing. Uh, I've done it before for you guys just to show you. And as you can see, it's not my favorite thing to do. I just don't like it. And it starts, my older, this set looks worse. Um, I just don't like it. It bows out and does all kinds of funky things as it is. Like, I don't want to do that. So, um, yeah. Um, okay, so I'm just going to rubber emboss on the second pass is what I'm going to do. And I always keep the metal shim facing this instead of even that touching my magnetic mat because, again, it gouges. Even if you're not cutting into it, it still gouges your mat. So that's how I do it. But that's just me. Okay, so you do you. All right, there we go. And another plate. And I need to turn and plug my machine in. I unplugged it to plug something else in. Um, so I'm just going to run this through. When I come back, it'll be cut, and then we'll go to the embossing. Okay. Like that and it's gonna stick to the magnet anyway oh uh, the die will because it's magnet behind there now I want to see it looks like it's embossed pretty well already or enough maybe not huh not bad I don't know if you can see that it's very faint so it's bad enough where like obviously I want to do it again so usually I don't manipulate this so much I don't try to move it but it moved anyway so I'll leave it at that it's a little bit wonky up here don't like that. You know what I'm saying? It's getting a little funky there. 
I'm gonna leave this here. I'm gonna leave this all in place and I'm gonna use the small rubber mat. And I'm gonna tell you why, because of how wonky it got. I don't really wanna put the rubber mat over all this whole thing because then it's gonna get crazy again. It looks like my lines to fold, my score lines are pretty well established. So I'm just gonna put this on here and run it through this way. So just that top part gets an extra pass. And let's see. <laughs> so funny because it's so skinny on that back end that the machine's like, I don't know. Ooh, okay. Hopefully you can see that. It looks like it might have moved a little bit, but that's okay. It probably did it after it popped out. Yeah. Very pretty. Okay, I'm gonna cut out the other two pieces and I'll be right back. Okay. So I just use the little guy. Oh, pops out real easily there. And here we go. And again, the score marks are, I mean, are in there, like nice and tight. Now, it does make a mark around the edge from where um, the die itself is. So what happens is sometimes those score marks want to become the score marks. So just be careful when you're folding them that that's not what you're scoring. I was just looking at this real quickly. Yeah, I'm adhering them now. I'm not adhering. I'm scoring them now because I don't want it. I want to be able to really see the very edge of this. That makes it look the nicest because you are going to put this on here and it is not going to match up perfectly. I mean, you can see the paper, you know, you're going to have that. So um, I like to score this and fold it so that when I go to place it down, I'm seeing exactly. If you have it like this, I mean, you're going to look at it and you're going to line it up, but I just want to be able to see exactly where this is folded and then uh, control it that way, but that's just me. And then, okay, so this is the front side, the piece that where the die went in and I made the embossing. So we're gonna turn this over. I'm gonna go ahead again, pre-score this cause that's just how I do it. I know usually I stick to the instructions, but sometimes and famously Anna's instructions are kinda, sometimes they have some issues. <laughs> so I'm doing it this way because just from envelope making and other things, I just feel like this is better for me but if you want to stick them down like she said first and then fold things go for it i'm not really really bone folding obviously you can see i didn't even bring a bone folder i'm just looking at it they get really wonky here hopefully we can smooth that out okay so that was step one as far as doing all that and then she wants you to put the adhesive on the tabs and i do have some double-sided i mean i have plenty of double-sided adhesive here that I've had for a long time that I should try using. Oh, this one's pretty cool. Um, I think this might be from Crafter's Companion. I'm gonna take this first piece off because it's kind of wonky. Um, it makes it easy to peel supposedly. So I don't know if you can see the adhesive is only like in the center and the rest of it's just there to peel it better. Now, I'm probably this is the worst tape to use. I like using glue, you guys know that. <laughs> you know what, should I use glue? Uh, I'll use this later. I like to use glue and especially right now because that way we can get it right to the edge Because what's gonna happen is if you don't get it right to the edge, there's gonna be a pretty big gap and you're gonna it's gonna be more noticeable and it's not I Think as nice, but that's just my opinion. I suppose all right Again, I'm looking at the where I folded it and up here and I'm folding it over so I can see exactly where that edge is. And hopefully, we'll be right on the edge. Because what happens is if you don't fold this and you glue it on and when you go to fold it, the fold is a little bit inside, you're definitely going to see that paper edge, that raw edge from this base piece. So this at least gets it closer to the edge. And then you can think, well, you just bone fold it more that way for the same reason that this thing already has like kinks from where it's folded, it's gonna be a problem. So this is why I do it this way. All right, and I'm gonna do the other side exactly the same. Where did I get this paper? It looks funky. Doesn't it look like blue and then it looks like purple and like even here where I put the glue, it's changing the color where the where the dye kind of pressed harder. It's weird stuff. All right, I'm gonna glue this one down exactly the same way and I'll be right back. So the next step, that was basically step three. So four it says apply double-sided adhesive to the side panels as shown. It didn't say anything about this middle section here. Nowhere. 
and I'm gonna glue it shut because if this is just kind of open, you know, you're gonna try to put your card in there. It's gonna get stuck. Like, I'm good. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this. I'll put a little glue kind of towards the center area. Hopefully you can kind of see that. And I'm gonna glue that down because otherwise I don't, I don't know what. It's just gonna be floating there. Okay. So now here, she says to put the adhesive, and this time I will use this stuff just so we can try it out. I rather use a wet glue. This hurts my heart, but that's okay. Because <laughs> I don't really know where these little strips are going. But yeah, pretty cool, because, you know, if your glue stays down, I guess I'll get a bone folder at this point. Um, it should be easy to peel. <laughs> Maybe I've had this stuff too long. It does not want to come away. Super easy peel, you guys. <laughs> there it goes. You know why? It's because it's that kind of tape that's, um, it has texture to it. I don't know if, it... there's some tapes where it's just clear, but there's tapes that have like, um, like a reinforcement kind of material in there. And that's why that was kind of not reacting the way I wanted it to. And there you go. I... Again, preference. I'm just trying to follow the instructions. I would rather put the tape on here because I here and here where I put it, just like in the instructions, is way lower. I can see that my finger can go in here a pretty good amount, you know. I would have put it on the outside. But again, I try to stick to the instructions as much as I can. Um, beautiful envelope for a 6x6 card, basically. It did get really wonky, so I don't know. Maybe next time I cut it, I probably won't use the metal shim. Because, do you see all that? I don't know. A lot of times it has to do with pressure. It just makes the paper like warp, so. And this did get a little bit of shadowing. I don't know if you see that. Eww. It looks pretty. I mean, unless you really stare at it, you know. But again, uh, for a six inch square card, I believe this is about six and an eighth. It's six and an eighth inch square. So it gives you a little room for a six inch card. If I had a six inch card right now, I would show you. I will try to find a card blank for that, but I don't have one ready. Um, so I'll try to find a card blank to show you that in just a minute. Oh yeah, yeah. This vellum one, now that I think about it, I should have used the vellum on this other envelope. It scares me. Let's see. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm, I don't know that I'm gonna try to emboss this one. Sorry. So yeah, see these dies came from the other set and they show it in there to put it on the front for your addressing um, or however you want. It's pretty, very pretty. Again, same thing. You're gonna cut the middle, you're gonna cut two flaps and then we're gonna go from there. Um, let me see how long this one is. Ah! Yeah, so we have to max this out like this, and that's a bummer because that means I need to use a whole other paper because there's no way I'm going to get that flap on this side. So that's okay. What I'm going to do is get it as close as I can to conserve as much of this paper as I can. Uh, I am, like I said, oh, the embossing's kind of... We'll see. We'll see if I end up embossing it. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to stick it down really well all around and then run it through, run through the side flaps, and I will be right back. I want to show you this real quick. When I switch out from this, <laughs> uh, the machine pulled this in really in a weird way. I don't know why, but oh well. Um, I don't want to mess with it too much. And I do want to make mention, if you guys, because I know maybe somebody will say it's the glue that made this do this. It's not the glue. It's obviously I didn't put glue here. It's just, it's just the pressure. Again, I would run it through probably without it. Um, it just happens sometimes. Ooh, this got a little pulled. Yeah, the machine took it in and all kind of crooked for some reason, even though I had it straight and I was like, ah! So I, I guess I didn't like this first bump. Um, so I um, readjusted and I turned the machine off. So of course a little hiccup like that didn't get recorded because I wasn't planning on some, having a problem like that. Um, so I just stopped it and reversed it, let it come back out. I'm only gonna put this like really just here, you guys, <laughs> for this one. Again, I can switch to the small plates, but um, just because I only want that and I don't want it to get messed up. So this is basically what you would do for if you only had the long, the smaller plates. So I'm just gonna do that and then press run just so that area gets that second hit. I don't really want it to get as wonky as that first one did. 
Again, if you cut into your mat, you might be able to get your cut, your emboss at the same time. Sometimes you still have to emboss it anyway, but that's kind of what that's for. Ooh. I can see it did that frosting, which I think is pretty, but it did on the backside, right? Perfect. Lovely, lovely. Okay, I'm going to cut the other two flaps and I will be right back. Okay. I wonder if the bigger plates are, the more they kind of warp. Because I hardly ever use those large plates and they warp pretty badly right now. <laughs> and I've never really had that issue. I know some people say leave it under your machine or things like that to flatten out. But like I said, I don't use those very often. I try not to. I try to conserve them. But um, that's what happened. And I've just been on a vellum kick. And vellum has been not the greatest to me recently. But I just want to try it out. Okay. So again, I like to fold these. Oh my goodness, this is <laughs> very scary with the vellum. I'm gonna go little bit by little bit. I don't even know if I'm in frame. Sorry, I'm putting it right where I can see what I'm doing. Ooh. So just little by little. Same thing if you're doing this from acetate. I would just go little by little <laughs> across the whole thing. Okay, we're good. Ooh. Okay, those sounds bother me. <laughs> I will use the bone folder this time or some kind of... Did kind of break a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't completely break. This is weird. Huh. It gave like a really rough edge. Almost feels like, like it's just going to tear off. Okay, I'm going to fold this one. Same thing. Just get my little folds going, score lines, should I say, and then this one too. I'll see, I don't know if I have a card to put in here, but I made that sympathy card the other day that maybe I'll bring out. Maybe I'm not going to bone fold. Well, I already did the other one, but see how that stayed a little, it's white because that's what happens when you crease, but this one got crackly. I don't know, I can feel it, you know, where this one still feels very smooth. So maybe let's spare the bone folding. It's easier on these because they're small areas to fold over. But these other guys, you gotta work it. So I'll be right back, baby steps all to the side and I'll be right back. So again, uh, I'm gonna use the wet glue because I've used Deluxe Adhesive Nouveau Deluxe on vellum before and it looks pretty good. It works pretty nicely. But, oh, you're kidding. <laughs> what? Uh, you guys, how does that make sense? On the other one, it looked perfectly fine, right? Hold on, let me see here. I guess because this is the exact same shape both ways, this is not the exact same shape both ways, so one's gonna have to go forward, one's gonna have to go backward with the backward cut to it, you know what I'm saying? <sighs> I was gonna say, how can I fix this? If I put this down here and then cut this for the end, it's gonna be noticeable, isn't it? No, yeah, it'll be too noticeable. I was thinking, look, and you can cover it down here so you can't tell that this is angled. So that's actually pretty cool. But up here, you're going to have to angle it yourself, right? If you want to cut it from, like, here to that way. And it's going to be pretty obvious that it's not the same because of that. So let's just do it the other way. Oy, oy, oy. I didn't even think about this. Sorry, guys. Ugh, it is really... All right, <laughs> baby steps, baby steps the other way. you think it'd be easier because it's already been creased once, but this is feels harder. <laughs> and now it's gonna be even more noticeable. What a bummer. Okay, if you guys have a pattern paper, make sure you're cutting into it one way. You can flip the paper and cut it the other way. It's still gonna not look good, <laughs> okay? It's still gonna have a rough edge. Again, I think we can cover most of it because let's pretend that's the one that goes behind. Right, let's tuck this one in the back. So really the only thing you're seeing on this one is this little top part. Not too bad, but if you have a pattern paper, you're gonna have to cut one. I'll show you what I mean. Oh yeah. Um, okay, I just have some pattern paper here. You're gonna have to cut one this way, and then you're gonna have to flip your paper and cut the other one 
so that when you go to the right side, it's doing what you want it to do. <laughs> okay, I hope that makes sense. I know sometimes some, it just doesn't make sense in some people's heads and mine too. Like that's something that's hard to, but what's gonna happen if you just cut two like this, you're gonna have to flip one over and it's gonna be white on the front, right? So you have to have one pattern side and then flip it to the non-pattern side and cut the other one so that when you do flip it like this, <laughs> the pattern will be showing. It's still gonna have a rough cut, but your pattern will be right. Okay. Uh, I'm still gonna use, like I said, the wet glue because I've used Nuva Deluxe Adhesive and it works really nicely even with um, acetate. I think I showed you guys the other day when I did the busted out with the Anna Griffin acetate cards. Um, it's not bad. So I'm not gonna put a ton, but still enough. And same thing. Hey, hey, hey. Let's see where this is. Just about there. I'm gonna turn it over. And I am definitely eyeballing this, keeping my eyes on that. I do like that the glue kind of spreads a little bit because that way it'll get right on the very edge, you know? And again, I'm just gonna wait for that to set up. And this is just me complicating matter matters because I wanted to use vellum, so <laughs> it's not too scary. And then this guy, same thing, I'll put glue. I'm gonna glue it down over here. And I'll come back before we glue the center piece. Okay. And this piece. Make sure I'm not gluing this down. Now, um, I just took a peek on the other side just to make sure it looked right as I'm gluing these. And the way the machine pulled this in looks so bad. Look at that. But again, it's vellum. It's you know, it's gonna react differently than just regular paper, so that was not the greatest thing. And then, you know, I totally veered off of the instructions, if there are instructions, which is basically the same as before. So yeah, you put the glue, you add them, and then she wants you to put glue on this bottom. And what? <laughs> There's adhesive for there. Apply those side adhesive to the side panels as shown. How about we glue this area? Oh, I guess this thing. Use an embellishment to seal to close the envelope. So you're supposed to cut this out and then put this here to seal it. I don't know about that. I'm just going to use glue. Especially if you're not using vellum, um, it won't be very noticeable. Because it'll be under your paper that's not vellum, hopefully. <laughs> so I might still have to cut that just to cover that vellum area up, but the glue. I'm gonna have to hold this for a minute too because vellum's a little plasticky. So, okay, we have that and then we're gonna glue this. I might have to give up the ghost with this vellum. I keep trying to use it and it's just not, it doesn't really like me. <laughs> There's that. So I am going to flatten that out and I'm gonna hold on to that. So I'm gonna hold this and this until the whole thing sets up. Okay, so in between here I was quote unquote cleaning up um, and I just left this sitting on here, so let's remove that. So, not too great, because I can kind of see the glue. Um, but not too bad as far as the glue goes. But, um, again, just that... <laughs> just pulled it in. So I grabbed the card um, from the Sending Sympathy card set, which is funny because this is so oversized, but this is from her Anna Griffin's card set. So you think this also would be, like, a bigger size card, but... It is not. So let me open this up. Hopefully I didn't glue this thing completely shut. I guess if I did, it wouldn't matter because there's plenty of room here. Okay, so I'm putting this facing this way. And then you would have, if you wanted to cut that big strip there. Not bad. Uh, let's see if it was facing this way. So on this side is where you're going to have those things. But at the same time, this is the side that you uh, label, right? So... What's more visible? I don't know. Again, it's vellum. It's not like she said, hey, make out of vellum. I just decided to. Very pretty though. I love the vellum, the way it looks through there. And then I grabbed a six by six card base. This is from a Crafter's Companion kit. I just know that she always includes six by six card bases. So I just opened one up, uh, one of my sub kits and there it is. So let's pretend that's in there. It is a very tight fit. So what's interesting for this one is if you make this like a thick card with like literally anything on top of it, even the smallest amount, it's gonna be really, really tight. 
Now, let's say your card base is five and a half inches. Great, but it's going to be a little bit short, but it'll fit very well. So, but that's kind of weird because most of her card bases, I think, are six inch. Either way, it's tight for a six inch square card. Five and a quarter, five and a half is probably what you want to put in here. Or a very flat six inch card, right? A square. So there's that. A little too much pressure on this, a little too much pressure on that one. So I think next time if I was to do it, I wouldn't include the metal shim on either one. Um, that's just what I'm thinking. And then you have all the little pieces that you can cut out and top here and there, you know, however you want to use that. But all right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm glad to have them because I always want to collect her stuff, but um, they're okay. I, I do like that this one cuts out on one 12 inch piece of paper. I love that. Um, this is a very big <laughs> envelope, but uh, you know, it works. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the next one. Bye now.